Hello and welcome to Cinema Clips. Today I will be reviewing the 2011 Cars 2, aka this plot sequel probably no one was expecting, and comparing it with the 2014 Planes 2 sequel. And I'm going to try and explain to you why I personally think Cars 2 did a better job at doing a very diverse sequel. Now in case you haven't seen these movies, or you want a quick refresher, here's one. So Cars 2 properly starts with a spy theme, where we meet Finn McMissile, a British agent who is answering a distress call from the very beginning of the movie. He gets caught while doing so, which finds him being chased by all the bad guys in the ring, but in the end he gets away and suddenly we get a big jump cut to Mater, who's also on his own mission which seemed to be destroy this guy who probably didn't have any car insurance. Anyway, it was all for a good uh, cause because Meta had big plans for this summer. Waiting all summer for this. What do you got playing? Oh, oh, oh. you sure you can handle it? Come on, you know who you're talking to? This is Lightning McQueen. I can handle anything. Looks like you didn't learn from the last time you said that, McQueen. Anyway, later on, Meta was able to get McQueen into the World Grand Prix and off to Tokyo they go. We find out spies like to do business in a party environment, Meta gets mistaken for one of the spies and basically that set, uh, sets in motion the rest of the film. The real spy from the bathroom fight gets interrogated and eventually killed, which honestly I almost wonder if that was the worst crime they did in this movie. With the amount of comments I've got about Pugel's remorse about his death, I'm pretty surprised that Cast 3 wasn't about, well, Rod Redline. The rest of the movie is mostly about Mater and the spies trying to find out who's really behind this whole messing up on and oil and making alternative fuels look bad. McQueen explains to Mater why he is always his best friend. Near the very end, it all comes together in Mater's head who the real headman is in this whole thing. <coughs> Sorry, I mean head car. I get it. I get it! And like that, Mater and McQueen go off to finish the case they started. Later on, Mater becomes a Sir. I wonder if I can become a Sir. <coughs> sir Clips. Never mind, let's just continue on. Anyway, that's a quick summary of Cars 2. Let's quickly move on to Planes 2 and then we can get into why Cars 2 did better. So Planes 2 starts off with Dusty's new racing life where he's able to beat his competitors with ease and spends most of his days racing and smearing his initials on other planes' wings. Yes, he's come a long way. Those days come to an end when Dusty gets a bad stroke of engine failure, turning him from the once Dusty to something more like Rusty. Jokes aside though, this is a very confusing part for me because this is the reasoning they gave why they could just fix Dusty up and he'll be all good to go for the next race. Your gearbox, it's... It's out of production. Long since discontinued. So you're telling me someone as famous and influential as Dusty could not try and at least pay to get one custom made for him? And well, even if he didn't have the wealth for it, I'm sure there'll be someone willing to invest in a very famous racer that is, well, you know, had a very good track record. Dusty not being able to accept his fate, decides to go out that night and push himself to his limits. But he ends up crashing and that's the end of the film. Number three. Nope, just kidding, he survives the crash, almost ends up burning his entire uh, village down and gets his friends into trouble with the law. Wow, what a great guy. Although this scene does reflect how amazingly strong Dusty's prop is. Now I have a question for you. If you were a racer and suddenly you had your whole life turned upside down, you can't race anymore, what do you do? You become a firefighter, duh. So anyway, off to Yellowstone he goes and becomes a firefighter. But these aren't your normal firefighters, oh no no no. These firefighters always seem to be happy when there's a fire. Like maybe it's boring or something, but you just have to watch it to see. Come on boys, let's load up! Patch, drop the needle! Yes, there's no cars or wildlife in danger, it's playtime. Later on in the movie, Dusty goes through training to become a proper firefighter. And when it's Dusty's time to shine, you know, all that training he's done, 
Instead, he doesn't listen to someone that's way more understanding in this and almost gets him killed. Wow, like I said, he's such a great guy. Anyway, there's a ton of just movie left, so I'm kind of just gonna skip to the really end. Anyways, there's another massive fire and Dusty gets himself in a bad situation and yes, it kind of ends up in the same way he had that other guy end up. But not to worry, when they get back to base, he gets all stitched up, but wait a moment, there's even more good news for him. But your gearbox. I know. Thanks for trying, Maru. You're welcome! What? Cause you're fixed! Wait. Yes, and with that, the movie is basically over. And now with that aside, it's time to get into the real analysing of these films. So I think the main reason why I chose Cars 2 versus Planes 2 is that they both have very different storylines compared to their first sequels. Cars 1 was establishing the character of McQueen and then suddenly Cars 2 changed to more being about Mater and this whole amazing spy plot that no one had been introduced to in the first film. And although Planes 2 had a similar building up where Dusty's whole future was once to become a, a racer and they did give a bit of reasoning that he had an engine failure and he couldn't continue on but it just seemed a bit random that he was actually fixable the whole time. I think one reason why, one main reason why Cars 2 won out over Planes 2 in my opinion was it took, instead of having McQueen go out on a whole big spy theme they had Mato, who was already a large side character, but it gave a bit of in-depth who he was and building out his character a bit more. But on the other hand, their characters were very similar from the first movie. Mato was always that side, almost goofy character, and McQueen, although he learned friendship, he could still be a bit of a <clears throat> toolbox when he wanted to be. Did I? I lost the race because of you! But on the other hand, that is actually forgivable, because that's just his character. But the problem comes when Dusty was always being framed as this really humble and really nice personality crop duster. When suddenly in the second film, he's really resilient to advice from people that know more than him. Also, both the movies don't, from what I can see, don't have a clear moral or a lesson. Now, the thing is, in Cars 1, Cars 2, Mater doesn't really learn a lesson, but on the other hand, I think it makes up for it simply because it's more of a spy theme, and there's a this whole mystery going on. It's not really trying to portray a moral. Mater already had a good relationship with, with McQueen, while on the other hand, I find that Planes 2 almost seems to be trying to portray a moral, but doesn't really hit one that I can see. I mean, the only clear one I can think of is friendship. That's probably the most bog standard moral you can ever have in any film. I mean, one could say that Cars 3 is almost the follow on, the true follow on from Cars 1. I think Cars 3 had a better lesson or a different lesson. It was about a racer who had been hopelessly outmatched and eventually helped someone who didn't get that same chance that he did before. Why am I suddenly talking about Cars 3 now? Well, I think that Planes 2 could have gone a similar route as Cars 3. Maybe instead of Dusty becoming a firefighter, he gets damaged permanently or just so badly that he can't race ever and there's no hope for him. And eventually he ends up training someone that has always looked up to him and helps them get into the racing industry that was their dream. But hey, that was just my opinion. I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments below and see you in the next video.